We have somehow divided our boundaries by drawing lines across the ocean as though that these are all separate entities that stand alone. And that concept is something that needs to be uh, blurred and perhaps eliminated. The Marianas Trench Monument is a huge case in point for the disparities that exist. There's one, one single park ranger. There's yet to be a, a park superintendent. There's yet to be um, you know, visitor center or any kind of like meaningful community engagement. One of the main ways that the United States preserves our oceans is through the designation of Marine Protected Areas, or MPAs. So a marine protected area um, is a place on the ocean. Um, it tends to have a border, and it's a place where we restrict human activities. The idea is that we're finding uh, special places in the ocean, sacred places, uh, and we're protecting them for future generations. MPAs have been an important part of Biden's America the Beautiful initiative, which includes the goal of conserving 30% of U.S. lands and waters by 2030. And we're not far from this goal. Already 26% of U.S. water is contained within an MPA, but they aren't distributed evenly across the country. 96% of these MPAs are in the U.S. Pacific around Hawaii, but also surrounding islands like American Samoa, Guam, the Northern Mariana Islands, and Wake Atoll. But the question is, how did the U.S. come to even have a say over all these distant waters? And to answer that, we have to go back to 1856. During the Industrial Revolution, President Fillmore claimed many islands as part of the U.S., the first president to do so. Specifically those covered in bird poop as a way to produce more fertilizer for the growing crop needs at the time. Flash forward to 1983, the U.N. standardized exclusive economic zones, or EEZs, around every coastal country. Now, every country with an EEZ could claim exclusive access to the ocean to a distance of 200 nautical miles from their coast. Remember all those islands in the Pacific? Even with a small amount of land, they all add massive ocean area to the U.S.'s EEZ. And that's how today, the U.S. has claim over all these distant waters. And President Joe Biden's America the Beautiful initiative means we're working to conserve them, since they will be critical towards helping the entire country reach the 30% goal. The thing that I, I think is important in America the Beautiful is that there is an acknowledgement that indigenous uh, people have a contribution to make. Conversations about conservation have to also be the, the conversations that we have with our communities because they are the keepers of this responsibility. But the Pacific territories are not treated with the same federal support as the state of Hawaii in terms of funding, staffing, and other resources, which leaves the territories in a bit of a dilemma. They're expected to take care of their protected waters, but... We just don't have the local resources to, you know, properly monitor and regulate and protect against, you know, for example, illegal and destructive fisheries. And so far, the federal government is not doing enough to combat these inequities. The best way to conduct ocean conservation is from the ground up, um, but uh, any government approach is going to be from the top down. So uh, in order for America the Beautiful to be successful, it's going to have to have communities working together with governments to de deliver conservation outcomes. We can offer in the islands a significant part of the solution to climate change, but we need the partnership and we need the resources. And, and also we, we need to be equal partners in, in these efforts. So here are the next steps the federal government should take. Help implement some of the existing protected areas. And this means getting funding and staffing and enforcement out to Northern Mariana Islands, out to Guam, out to American Samoa. Move decision making for these protected areas out of Hawaii and into the territories. And so this would be placing more of the management 
In the communities that are, that are closest to these protected areas that have a historical and cultural ties to them, improve communication between the federal government and the territorial governments, especially when it comes to natural resources management. We have to remember that uh, the, the territories are owned by, but not part of the United States. So it, it just kind of makes sense that we'd go above and beyond to work with these indigenous communities who literally live on the other side of the planet, but who are American citizens. We find ourselves struggling because we've created a division for the place that we need to now protect and should have always protected. I think the importance for us in our viewing conservation is not to continue this idea that as long as I do my job within my designated barrier or, or, or line, that I don't have to worry about what happens on the other side of that line. That is not uh, the way that we view it, is that it's, it's all one place. Our relationship with the ocean is central to our identity, not just as islanders, but as citizens of the world. And our survival of the planet really depends on healthy oceans.